Good morning and welcome to our worship this week from Three Cliffs Parish. Welcome to a place where God's light shines, where even in the darkest of times, the light of God is known and felt by those who worship in this place. So this Sunday we meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We acclaim together, Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you, no secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God's light shines into the darkest of places. It shines into the darkest places of our heart, of the darkest places of our mind, of the world itself. And therefore now we bring those things into the light as we say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. As children of light, let us now receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Light of the world has come down into darkness, and it is to that light that we indeed give glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. And Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Listen to the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. The servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed to your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather them with tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of harvest I will send to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them into bundles, to burn them, to gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus later explained that parable to them. And Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, the good seed are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil, the harvest at the end of the age is the reapers and the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. 
and the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is a challenging parable. But remember, it is a parable. It is a word, a story, filled with illustrations. Illustrations people could relate to and understand. But it is not Jesus saying, you will, you must, you shall. It is Jesus offering a choice. This is what the, lies at the heart of all parables. Jesus is giving people a story to interpret, to understand, to talk about, to choose, to decide for themselves how they respond to it. The parables in themselves are a collection of stories that Jesus put out there to teach about the kingdom of heaven. But he wasn't being dogmatic. He was talking in languages that the people would understand. The arable farming uh, language of gathering in, of burning what is not wanted. The language of the fiery furnace refers to Gehenna, a place well known to everyone as the huge rubbish pit outside Jerusalem. It's also had continuous fires burning day and night, where even the dead were taken. But we don't have to see this as a vision of hell either. Most people think of hell as a fiery furnace, with a fork-tailed devil running round, poking and prodding them with a pitchfork. That is very much a medieval invention, a medieval understanding of the heavens, of light and the hell of darkness, of damnation. And it's one which has gathered uh, an image in the popular conscience because that's how people have preached it. We know the expression hell, fire and damnation. But I think the truth that Jesus was preaching is something far different. Jesus is not teaching eternal fire. Jesus is saying, here is a choice. Be good seed and be close to God, or be seed that rejects God and be cut off from him. But it is not God's choice to make. It is the choice of those who respond to God's word. God has not got you or I singled out for good or for bad. Our lives are not ordained from the moment that we are born with an understanding that we're going up, for want of a better word, or down, smoking or non-smoking. Our lives are offered choices, not just heavenly choices, but earthly ones as well. And how we respond to those choices usually determines the sort of life that you and I will lead. And here is Jesus, 2,000 years ago, offering to the people of the Galilee choices. How will you respond to God's word, he is asking them. How will you respond to the story? And then he explains it in a bit of detail to the disciples, but again using a language that they would understand, something that they could relate to, that they were seeing, that they could see things as a struggle between good and evil, light and darkness. And in our dark world, we still look for that light. And people at the time of Jesus were seeking that light too. Sadly, some got it and many didn't. It's a bit like the parables. Some got them and understood them and some did not. Here is a straightforward choice of how we respond to God. Are we good seed? Is what is planted in us good and brings forth good? Or are we rebellious and turn our backs on the grace that he offers? It's never too late to respond to God's word. It's never too late to respond to the call that he places on our lives. We 
never turn our back on something like this. And God never turns his back on us. Yes, we are offered choices, we are asked to make decisions. But in a sense, this choice has already been ready made for us. Because God's love extends to all, whoever they are, wherever they are. His mercy and his grace is upon all, whoever they are, wherever they are. We may choose to respond, but God's love is a constant and is always there. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into the heavens and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, you have chosen us and called us. You know us by name and you shine a light into all our hearts that we may make a choice and respond to you, that we may bring forth good seed in our lives, that we may be those wheat in your field, and that you may indeed gather us in. But help us to understand, Lord, that nobody is beyond your love, nobody is beyond your grace, Nobody is beyond your forgiveness and compassion. Help us not to judge others. For in judging we too are judged and may be found unworthy of the kingdom to which we have been called. Let us place our trust in you, Lord, that you have gathered together those people that you wish to call to you. And of course, as Jesus said, that is the whole world. Not one should I lose, Jesus told his disciples. It was true then, it is true today. The Lord looks over after all of us, all mankind of every nation. The Lord's compassion extends to all mankind of every nation. The Lord's love extends to all mankind and every nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shed your light into the hearts of mankind, illuminate their ways, that those who lead us may act with integrity, those who are set over us may act with wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray that the light of God will shine out from the churches here on Gower and beyond, be they open or closed. May the light be the people of God in the community, the true church of God, living out their daily lives of prayer and of service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in our church family this week, we pray for the soul of Anne King. 
Gather her to yourself, O Lord, a good and faithful servant, that she, with her husband Phil, may know the light and life of heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. The Lord be with you and also with you. The light and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. You the glorious King.